Good evening. Self-defense in the LGBT community. March 26 was D-Day at the United States Supreme Court on the two marriage equality cases. Judy Ricard returns from Washington, D.C. with first-hand experience. And thousands march for marriage equality in San Francisco on this May 2013 edition of Outlook Video. And welcome to the May 2013 edition of Outlook Video, your nationally recognized, award-winning news magazine for LGBT communities. I'm Roberta gonzalez Greg. Hello everyone, I'm Johnny Zick. Just one more month and we'll be Pride in San Francisco. You know what that means. Tight March. Film festival. And lots of fun. And on a serious note, the United States Supreme Court decision on Proposition 8 and the Defense of Marriage Act in late June. Same-sex bi-national couple activist Judy Ricard was in Washington, D.C. on the last week of March at the courthouse for oral arguments. And she was at the White House where she received something special from President Obama. More details when she talks with Raymond Donald Hong here in the studio later in this half hour. Also on the evening before the Supreme Court oral arguments on Hollingsworth versus Perry, also known as the Prop 8 case, about 3,000 of supporters of marriage equality marched from San Francisco's Castro District to City Hall. Raymond Donald Hong and Ken Hodnett were there at the march and will bring us more later in the program. On another serious note, some of you know that Johnny here was Mr. August 2013 of the 2013 Bear Chess Calendar. His calendar mate, Dalton Huckabee Jr., Mr. January 2013, was assaulted in the Castro on March 11th. As of this date, Huckabee is recovering from his injuries and is doing well. Later in the program, Johnny will be interviewing Sean Bassett and David Velasquez of Dark Horse Gym on ways you can defend yourself if you encounter such similar situations. The corner of Southwest 12th Street and Southwest Orlean Street in Topeka, Kansas is where the infamous Westboro Baptist Church is situated. It's run by the Reverend Fred Phelps and they're known for picketing at funerals of soldiers and hate crime victims with signs and blaze with the words, God hates fags. They're seen here picketing Raymond's High School in San Francisco. If you look here on your screen of the Google Maps Street view of the corner, you can see the church on the far right with the banner, God hates America. Really warm and inviting, isn't it? Mm, it's a shame. Now over here on the far left corner is a small unassuming house. It was purchased for $80,000 by Aaron Jackson last year. When the weather warmed up, Jackson painted the house in the bright rainbow colors of the pride flag and called it Equality House. The house will serve as a resource center to raise funds for anti-bullying programs in K-12 schools throughout America. Jackson says Shirley Phelps Roper of the Westboro Baptist Church, who has taken pictures of the house, says she likes the color scheme. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Maybe he can invite her over for dinner sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, Sean Bassett and David Velasquez of Dark Horse Gym. I'm Annie Clark and you're watching Outlook Video. Have you ever noticed that self-defense classes for adults seem to always be geared towards women, as if men naturally know how to defend themselves? Sean Bassett and David Velasquez of Dark Horse Gym, a boxing gym enrolled with the Rainbow Chamber of Commerce, are here to share some ways to defend yourself. Thank you, Sean David, for coming to the show. Thank you very much. So, self-defense, tell me uh, a little bit about uh, what you're trained in. Um, basically, I grew up doing uh, the Filipino martial arts. Um, basically, uh, Paramuk is one of the, the, <clears throat> the arts that we did. And basically, it's uh, for self-defense. Uh, anybody grabs you, tries to hold you down, anything, we can basically defend ourselves from that. Uh, I started uh, martial arts when I was uh, six years old. Started with Taekwondo, uh, elaborative training, like three different styles of Kung Fu. I'm also ex-military trained. So. And why do you feel that this is important for people to learn these type of maneuvers? A lot of people get picked on, attacked on the street. Um, I think a lot of times people just don't know how to defend themselves. Um, it's a good time to start learning, especially the way things are nowadays. We see on the news a lot of times that LGBT is involved in a lot of that kind of things. Yeah. And the um, conversation we had before is actually, you've actually experienced that growing up too. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, yeah, basically I grew up in a bad neighborhood. I grew up boxing too. So basically a lot of times I'd see people get picked on. I was jumped before quite a few times. It wasn't a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. So I had to learn how to defend myself. And you, I remember your stories too. I actually grew up as the 
one of the only uh, mixed African-American kids in a suburban uh, Caucasian neighborhood. So I was the odd man out and, and I learned really fast that I had to defend myself because all the other kids decided, oh, this kid's different, let's pick on him. A lot of people see a boxing gym and GLBT as polar opposites. And this was something that was very common because it was a common ground that people can come into. And you know, I've been to the gym and it's, it's very, very friendly. Um, and um, tell me a little bit more of how okay, you're involved in anti-bullying programs. Basically, we're through the PAL pro uh, program, the Police Athletic League. Um, and we're one of the first MMA programs here in California. Um, I work with a lot of troubled youth, kids that have been picked on. We work with girls, you know, that mm -hmm. make them stronger. Also, to give them confidence. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with a lot of kids. Work with adults too. So mm -hmm. we're we're just trying to make everybody more confident, you know, for themselves to make them safe on the street. You were an anti-bullying also. Yeah, the same also. thing. I mean, I've actually been a huge supporter of uh, of the San Jose Pride and also the Human Rights Campaign, and uh, okay. done a lot of work with helping people against the anti-bullying campaign. Uh, a lot of my friends uh, have been picked on and stuff, and actually okay. working in the LGBT community, I've seen and stopped several uh, attacks myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, wow. in in the San Jose area. Okay. We're going to do some demonstrations in a moment. So we're going to uh, have this little demonstration here. Um, but before we do that, we would just say that um, some of the best things to prevent getting in a situation like this is what, be aware of your surroundings. Always be aware of your surroundings. Um, Always have your keys ready when you're going to the car. Okay. And never be on your cell phone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Car, especially in a parking lot area. Or, all right. And there's there's strength in numbers. If at all possible in a questionable area, always make sure you're following the buddy system. Okay. And the, and one thing I like about this is that unlike a weapon, it can be taken away from you. It's something you can always have. Yes. So, and go ahead and show some of the. So one of the things that we basically do if somebody goes to grab your wrist um, is to clear the pit and then hit again. Okay. Once again, slow. I would clear what we call. Um, basically the gate, which is the thumb. The thumb is always the weakest part of the hand. This is the strongest part. So from here, one of the things that we can do too is use the elbow to hit, to clear. But when you go against the gate, it's basically a push-pull from here, hit to the throat, then the eyes. Okay. okay. So really slow. It would be here, throat, eyes. Okay. okay. Can't breathe, they can't see. Yeah, <laughs> they can't come out. Yeah, okay. That's one of the other things. If he goes off the other side of the wrist, the same thing, on break, Hit, eyes. Okay. So the thumb, basically, you could do one or two things. You could hit it with the elbow. If I bring in the hand in, I would hit. Clear, hit the throat, then the eyes. Okay. okay. And then what, what if your attacker comes from behind? Basically, if he comes from behind and grabs, and if he pulls on here, I can come up. Elbow, then elbow again. Okay. So if he pulls, once again, I come up straight elbow. And this is really... Basically, a natural movement. As soon as you get pulled, you hit him with the elbow and the jaw, and then come straight across. Okay. The most common attack that we always see is the, the throat double grab. throat grab. So from here, here, I would just come into the throat right right away. So what I'm doing is I'm clearing as I hit the throat, then the eyes. Again, once again, if he can't breathe, he can't come after you. If he can't see, he can't attack you. Okay. And what happens? If, like he was a lot taller than it, you. That will the same basically thing? we could do is a breakdown. So if he comes here. I could go throat high, so he, ooh, we'll let, let him do it. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so if you grab, I could come high, okay. eyes, groin low. Okay. 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 So basically, that would bring you down. I could even go from if you grab tall, right? If you grab tall from okay. here, I could drop down, come right to the throat, then back to the eyes. Okay. Same thing. And, uh, okay. And uh, what about maybe, sh maybe shorter? Like maybe me going or. Yeah. If he's shorter than me, then I'm then gonna you're... probably just kick him in the shin. <laughs> 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 <All right. So. laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming on. No problem. <laughs> thank you for having us. Yeah. <laughs> if you want more information on classes and training at Dark Horse Gym, find out more at facebook.com slash NorCal Fight Factory. Coming up next, Judy Rickard visits the United States Supreme Court. You're watching Outlook Video.